And the next item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 10936 in the name of Neil Finlay on RBS takes communities for granted. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. Mr Finlay, if you are ready, seven minutes, please. Thanks very much, President Officer. Uh, the Royal Bank of Scotland is a bank that we, the taxpayer, own and control with a 81% stake, a, a bank that we had to bail out to the tune of an eye-watering £37 billion, uh, a bank, of course, where Sir Fred, or I don't think he's Sir Fred anymore, but Fred Goodwin and his band of merry men, and it was largely men, almost brought a once great institution uh, to its knees through reckless mismanagement. They were playing fast and loose with customers' money and taking that bank, a bank that previously had a, a, a global reputation, taking it to the brink. A bank that caused panic amongst its loyal customers who feared their money would no longer be there. A bank that almost failed. And I would have thought that President Officer, the senior management of that bank would now be doing all it could to uh, win back the faith of its customers, all it could to apologise to the people who have loyally uh, banked with it, and all it could to show humility for what it did. But apparently not. Uh, this year we saw the true extent of RBS's closure programme. It was laid bare when it was revealed that it had earmarked 154 branches for closure this year, roughly a whole 5 per cent of its network. And as of today, more than 100 local branches have already been closed. Um, what we have seen, not just in my area, but across Scotland, is bra branch after branch after branch being pulled. In April, 44 branches were earmarked for closure, from Castletown in the north near Thurso to Berwickshire in the south, and branches in England and Wales too. And of these 44, 14 were the last banking town leaving local people and local businesses with no banking facilities. Uh, and this is significant because in 2010, RBS in their uh, uh, glossy customer charter uh, and gave a series of long-term commitments. Long-term commitment nine uh, pledged that, uh, let's see what it says. We, we pledge to stay open for business if we are the last bank in town. And they proudly stated, we have identified over 100 last, ba last bank in town locations where we will continue to provide local banking facilities. And they went on to boast, we have continued to provide banking facili uh, facilities in 146 locations where we are the last bank in town. However, this year, that commitment was ripped up and put into Fred's famous shredder. What a way to treat loyal customers, many of them and their families, customers for generations, businesses who've used RBS for decades. The last bank in town is not worth the paper it is written on, and neither is their customer service charter. In West Lothian, we see Falthouse and Armadale branches closing. Falthouse branch locked its doors for the final time on Tuesday. It is the last branch in town. Now a community of 5,000 people no longer has a bank. Armadale, a growing community of 10,000 people with 2,000 new houses being built, a school, a nursery, a new railway station, jobs and retail facilities, now uh, has no bank in town for people to use. And just over the border in North Lanarkshire, the village of Hart Hill no longer has a bank either. So much for their commitment so much for that promise to keep the last bank in town open. But of course they say, oh, it's okay, you can, we'll replace that provision, you can go online, you can use digital banking. For many people in these communities, that is not an option. And certainly for many older people, that is not an option either. Uh, and if 
Uh, and in some of the community, communities, they say, well, it's OK, we will have a replacement service. There'll be something else. Some, there is a post office provision. But for others, it is a, a twice a week, half hour mobile service. We have a better service than that from the local ice cream van. And over the summer, uh, I, along with my UK parliamentary colleagues, Graham Morris and Michael Connerty, met with official, senior officials of RBS. We put forward the social and economic case for keeping these branches open. We pointed out the needs of the uh, community, of business needs. And, um, but all that we got was an attempt to hide behind statistics of falling customer visits. Uh, they conceded that the fall in customers, customer numbers at these branches that they were closing was below the average fall elsewhere, and yet some of the other branches were being kept open. They would not tell us what their strategy was, what their plan was to roll out the closures, uh, but they, uh, uh, they said they would be continuing with it. Also, when I asked had they consulted customers, would they come to a public meeting and speak to people? speak to the community, uh, their answer was no. Instead, all they did was send a letter out advising customers the bank would be closing in a few months' time. No talking to people, not addressing local concerns, just a dear customer letter saying that it would close. I'm afraid, President Officer, we're now in a situation with RBS where it is uh, Long Nidre no more, Cumnock no more, Loch Winnock no more, Hart Hill no more, Armadale no more, Falthouse no more, and many other communities up and down the country no more. This is not the way that large companies who have received eye-watering levels of public money should be treating the people whose taxes bailed them out. RBS appears to have failed a single lesson from the banking crisis. Thank you, President Officer. Many thanks. I now call on John Mason to be followed by Hugh Henry. Speeches of four minutes or thereby, please. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and uh, thank you to Neil Finlay for bringing uh, this debate. Uh, I do realise that his motion uh, primarily focuses on West Lothian and North Lanarkshire, but he has mentioned uh, a wider uh, spread as well, and it's a very similar scenario, I have to say, to the one uh, we had in Shettleston uh, in June 2013, and before that, it was Bridgeton, also in my constituency, in March 2013. We're now in the position where, in my constituency, which is, I suppose, the same size as other people's, as far as people are concerned, we only have one Royal Bank branch for the whole constituency. The Shettleson branch was relatively small, but it was a very busy branch. I used it on several occasions myself and almost invariably had to stand in a queue before being served. Now, RBS argued, as uh, Mr Finlay mentioned, that more people are now banking online and fewer people are using the physical branches. And I accept that that is a trend that is actually happening. However, most people do still need an actual branch to go into from time to time. And that is especially the case where folk are less comfortable using the internet, banking by phone uh, and other, other methods. And that, in turn, tends to be in the poorer areas. So I have to say, I actually think Neil Finlay's uh, wording is somewhat generous to RBS when he says that the, the, he uses the phrase Ar apparent arbitrary nature of the closures. I do not actually think they are arbitrary. I think they are targeted to where the people have less money. Now, it might be argued that RBS is a business and must follow the profit. However, I have a few problems with that. First of all, businesses are allowed to have a conscience. Corporate social responsibility is now seen as a very positive attribute for companies, and it makes them more sustainable in the long term. Secondly, as again Mr Finlay has mentioned, Royal Bank is owned by the public and owes its very continued existence to the generosity of the public. Some of my poorer constituents, and I suspect that is true for Mr Finlay's as well, have gone through considerably hard times in recent years because of the stupidity of decisions made by RBS and other banks. Thirdly, they have continued to pay excessively high salaries and bonuses, so they seem to be able to cut some costs and not cut others. Fourthly, again as the motion says, there has been no engagement or consultation with local communities, and this was exactly our experience in Glasgow as well. The first public statement we got was not that they were thinking about closing the branch, but that they had already decided. 
They agreed to meet myself and other elected members, not to discuss the options, but only to explain what they were about to do. I have to say that I was so annoyed both by the decision itself and the way it was carried out that for once we set aside party differences in the East End of Glasgow and had a joint Labour and SNP campaign headed up by Sandy Hills Community Council. However, I'm afraid that even then the bank did not listen. Speaking personally, I've got fed up with some of the larger banks for a number of reasons and have switched my bank main account to one of the smaller banks, which should probably remain nameless, but which has its only Glasgow branch in my constituency. I would other, urge other members to think about this too. I am not arguing today that RBS could not make it, should not make itself profitable. A loss-making bank is not much good to any of us. But I am arguing that banks need to look at the bigger picture. They are, to a large extent, a public service, albeit generally privately owned. Serving the public must come into their thinking somewhere. And that should surely mean a little more listening and a little more consideration for our poorer citizens and communities, be they in West Lothian, Glasgow or wherever. Thank you. Thank you. I now call on Hugh Henry to be followed by Gavin Brown. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Ross McEwen, the RBS Chief Executive, told us, and I quote, we need to remember and then never forget that the customer is why we are in business. We'll try telling that to the customers in Laquinna, in the east end of Glasgow, in Armadale Fault House, and all the other communities uh, which are seeing the withdrawal of their last bank in town. Neil Finlay indicated that worthless pledge which RBS made. So where was that pledge when Ross McEwen was saying that we should never forget that the customer is why we are in business? Now, Lochwinnoch is a mixed community. People actually think it's an affluent community, and there are many people who live in Loch Winnoch who are relatively affluent. But it also has many people living there who are elderly and who are on lower incomes. And they rely on access to a bank. And figures have been quoted about reduced numbers and I, of customers, and I will come to that. But we have been told that there are now alternatives in place, that more people are using online banking, except that in Loch Winnoch, there is very poor internet access, so that can't always be relied upon. And also, we are told that the post office can provide an alternative service, except that the post office is now being relocated into a spar store, and that the services that are on offer will be extremely limited. And then what about the access to the nearest alternative, either RBS or any other branch? Well, the nearest settlement would be Johnston, over seven miles away. And Lochwinnock also has an extremely poor bus service. So for those without a car, it's difficult to get to an alternative. For those without access to the internet, it's difficult to access a service. And even for those with access to the internet, it's still difficult at times to access a service. Now, I, I would suspect that many of our constituents across Scotland would probably accept that there has to be some cut back in service if everyone was in it equally together. If there was a real problem and everyone was sharing the pain and the grief but that's not the case, because for the pennies that have been saved by the closures of their branches, we are seeing at the same time that in the past four years, RBS has paid out bonuses of £3.4 billion. A bank owned by us, the taxpayer, can afford to pay £3.4 billion in bonuses, but not use some of that to keep branches open in communities like Lochwinnoch. That same Chief Executive, Ross McEwen, is in line for a £1 million a year uh, in share allowance that sidestepped the EU bonus cap and effectively doubles his salary. He also received uh, uh, shares of almost £1.5 million as part of a £3 million signing-on deal when he was first hired from the Commonwealth Bank 
of Australia. So we're not all in it together. And therefore, I don't think it's right that my constituents or others should be asked to bear the burden so that a handful of people can continue to exploit the generosity of not just uh, the, the customers, but the generosity of the British taxpayer. So what we are seeing here, I think, is just cynicism and a continuation of the greed which brought the British banking system to its knees. We are not seeing a level playing field of people sharing out problems and sharing out responsibilities. They have not consulted, as Neil Finlay has said. They have ignored their customers despite the promises and the commitments that Ross McEwen made. So what we are seeing here is a taxpayer's owned bank cynically treating its customers badly, caring not one jot about the consequences. I would hope even at this late hour, presiding officer, that RBS will think again. But if they choose not to do so, then the very least they can do to these communities is to look at what they are doing with the assets and see how some good can be put back in to those communities which they are damaging. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> and I now call on Gavin Brown to be followed by John Penland. Thank you, uh, Deputy. Uh, Presiding Officer, I think uh, it is fair to say that any branch closure is a matter of regret, no matter where that is located in Scotland. There is an impact on customers, there is an impact on staff, um, there is an impact in the community more widely. And I think obviously the smaller the community, the deeper that impact is likely to be. And so I think any institution, whether it's a bank or any other organisation, has to think carefully about the consequences of any closure. And if they do decide to uh, close an office, how can they ameliorate or reduce those consequences as much as possible? It should be an absolute last resort uh, for a bank or other institution to close, particularly in a smaller uh, community, where indeed they may well be one of the last remaining institutions within that town or village. So some of the sentiment that has been expressed today, I can agree with. But other parts of it, I think, have been unfair towards the bank, and other parts of it, I think, have also ignored the realities of what happens out there on the ground. Because John Mason, in his statement, said he accepts that times are changing, technology is changing, but he wants branches to be kept open so that people have a place to go to, and I wrote this down, from time to time. It's not possible, I don't think, for institutions to keep every branch or office open so that people have a place to go to from time to time. And while I don't want to see any closures in my own region or in any other region, to be candid, I think we do also have to listen to what is happening out there on the ground. There has been a substantial change with how banks and indeed other businesses interact with their customers. I don't think it's right to say that these organisations ignore their customers. They have to follow the trends of what their customers are doing. The statistics I've been given, and they're from the bank, obviously I can't uh, verify them myself. In, in, in one second, Mr. Ernie, I can't verify them myself, but if what the bank is saying is correct, they're saying that branch transactions since 2011 are down by 30%, and online transactions are up by 232%. If those statistics are correct, then any business or institution surely has to then invest more of their resources into what the 232 per cent are doing, and they're inevitably going to invest less uh, in branches if the, uh, the footfall is dramatically reduced. I said I'd give way to Mr Henry. Okay. Henry. Would Gavin Brown not agree that a very small part of those massive bonuses to which I referred would be enough to keep open the branches which are threatened with closure, and would that not be justified? And would it not then enable to RBS keep their pledge to keep open the last branch in town? President, presiding officer, I haven't seen the inside of the bank's books. I don't know how much is saved from every individual closure. I don't know um, uh, the internal workings of the bank. I suspect Hugh Henry doesn't really do either. So I think it's very difficult uh, for an MSP to suggest that they know better than an organisation how to, to, to run that uh, organisation. I think I only have a minute left, uh, presenting officer. If you want, it's up to you. Uh, well, if, as long as I'm, I'm given some uh, additional time, I'm happy to give way to Mr Finlay. Neil yeah. Finlay? Uh, Mr Brown, uh, was speaking about customers, and uh, this is the, uh, a quote directly from the, uh, the, the progress report on the customer charter. It said, Dear customer, last June we made a public commitment 
to becoming Britain's most helpful bank. Uh, as part of this, we launched a customer charter, a set of 14 promises based on what you, our customers, told us was important from that bank. To show we are taking this seriously, we promise to be transparent and share progress along the way. Here we are, our first official report. And then they go in on to list all the successes in implementing the charter. Big ticks against the last bank in town. What does Mr Brown say to that in relation to the way that they say they're listening to customers, then completely ignore everything that they've just said? Mr Brown, and do take extra time. M Mr Finlay is perfectly entitled to express the view that they completely ignore customers, but I don't think any organisation that wants to succeed it can ignore customers. I don't, I don't accept that the bank entirely does ignore customers, and he's perfectly entitled to, to his view on that, but I just simply uh, disagree with him on it. But let me... Um, in, in my final minute, then, presenting officer, just take issue with, I think, uh, particularly the heading of the motion, where I think uh, Mr Finlay, um, I think, has just used a lazy uh, soundbite, to be candid. Um, and I was uh, aghast that John Mason described it as generous to say that RBS uh, takes communities for granted. I don't think that's correct, certainly not from my uh, own experience of speaking with the bank's employees and looking at the work that they do do in communities. One of the largest employers in the country, on a personal level, seeing the work that they've done with the Princess Trust and with eSpark, observing a money sense tutorial going on in secondary schools where bank staff take time out to go and try to help pupils all across the country, and the staff that make donations through their payroll and give up time to volunteer, and indeed the recent STV appeal. I think anybody who had seen what was going on on the ground a whole, across Scotland to say that they take for communities for granted, I think, would be unfair, and that's uh, where I disagree with some parts of the motion. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I call on John Pentland, after which we move to closing speech from the Minister. President Officer, I speak in support of Neil Finlay's motion, and having also tabled a motion regarding an RBS bank closure in my constituency, I will address the local circumstances, but many of my concerns apply to the closures that we are seeing across Scotland. The Royal Bank of Scotland has earmarked over 5% of its branch network, 154 branches, for closure this year. While customers have been told branches will close, there has been no formal announcement of the programme. Now, these closures include branches where the RB RBS is reneging on its promise, yes, that promise to keep the last branch in town open. Now, will this be the last closures? Who knows? For there has been no commitment made to the remaining 2,000 branches. And with the recent announcement of a third successive quarter of profit, with a pre-tax profit of £4.2 billion forecast for the year December 2014, understandably, customers and staff are angered and incensed by closures and job losses against a backdrop of rising profits and share prices. Presiding officer, the Royal Bank of Scotland is an 81 per cent publicly owned and is not unreasonable to expect it to be controlled and operated in the public interest. But like others, I am finding it extremely difficult to see how this is the case. When it is the public and the staff, not the other 19 per cent of investors who are disadvantaged by these closures. And I know that the bank has a responsibility to be prudent with its finances after the Fred the Shed rain. But surely, you know, this needs to be tempered by corporate and social responsibility, taking into account public and staff interests. The bottom line should not be solely about profit and share price. And we would not expect that as ethical from any other company, much less should it be excusable when the company is public property, having been rescued at public expense. And I am sure there are circumstances in which we would be prepared to wait a little longer to recover that public investment for the sake of other priorities, such as financial inclusion. Now, in my constituency, the impending closure of the Cleland RBS bank, bank, branch means that constituents will have to travel further afield for banking provision, and as alternatives in the area do not offer the same range of services, closure will significantly add to costs and inconvenience to local people and businesses. Now, I have been in touch with RBS 
And initially, you know, they gave a picture of a bank that had little custom. It then transpired that this was somewhat busier than was first painted. I have called for an extensive consultation and questioned the rationale and adequacy of the alternative facilities that will be available to the people of Cleland. RBS have now said they will provide a once a week mobile banking service. That, President Officer, is a poor substitute. And I believe it also underlines the determination to press ahead with the closure. In these circumstances, I have also sought to engage with them to look at what can be salvaged from the closure. I have asked about the building being made available for community use, perhaps hosting a credit union or another voluntary organisation. RBS have been willing to explore this possibility, but insist that part of that discussion is to talk about their responsibility to the shareholders. President officer, the bank needs to understand and accept that the public are the majority shareholders and that they should get the priority and at the very least, the bank should help to rescue something for, for my constituents, constituents who, through their government, rescued the Royal Bank. Thanks. We now move to the Minister for the closing speech. Minister, seven minutes or thereby, please. Thank you, President Officer. I begin by thanking Neil Finlay for raising this motion. It's an issue that we've debated on several occasions before. John Mason reminded us that he uh, he raised it, a, this matter with regard to the closure of branch in his constituency and he also alluded to the fact that he did so on a cross-party basis and I think this debate this evening has uh, seen uh, uh, across the, the benches of the parties that have been represented here in the debate making a number of very valid and salient points indeed and I think I start off by, by confirming that the Scottish Government does con share and understand the concerns that have been expressed today about branch closures in our local communities. But branches have and have always played a, a huge part in our communities throughout Scotland and we do rely on our banks to conduct our daily lives and our business and pay our bills. Um, and we are absolutely clear that customers must be at the heart of what banks do. Um, the decision to close the branches will affect everybody in the local community, as, as Mr Finlay uh, outlined and as other members outlined in relation to closures in their areas. Uh, Mr Henry, Mr Pentland, Mr Mason gave specific examples and there are many others that I know exist because there are many closures of branches around the whole country, presiding officer. Um, of course, I want to say a bit about the staff. The staff employed at the branches are the branch for many people and uh, certainly when I ran my business, the, the branch at the Victoria Road branch of Bank of Scotland were excellent. I can still remember Dorothy was one of the friendliest people that I ever encountered and cheered me up on many a day from the travise of running a, a small business in Scotland. So the staff have played an integral part and I want to pay tribute to them. And I understand from the RBS that the redundancies resulting from this programme of closures have been on a voluntary basis and we recognise that. Um, Obviously, the, the, the bigger picture is the bank, the bank is uh, one of the major businesses in Scotland, employing 11,500 people, supporting 122,800 businesses with nearly 2 million personal customers. As a matter of balance, I think it is reasonable to say that there are some positives that the bank contribute to, to the eSpark programme, for example, the microfinance fund, financial education in schools, which they play a part grants to charities, 47 charities, and their staff donating nearly a million pounds through payroll donations and raising a lot of money for the STV appeal, which helped children. I think we would all recognize that you know, there are positive points, but the focus of this debate is on branch closures, and I wanted to make a few remarks on that particular topic. Uh, well, I think if I could just make some progress, because I'm just coming to really the meat of the topics, but I thought it only fair to kind of set the matter in context, presiding officer, uh, uh, and uh, I have done so. Um, the decisions that have been taken, the RBS say, are not taken lightly or arbitrarily. And where a decision is made to close a branch, there is a three-month period between announcing a closure and the closure itself. I was uh, keen to understand whether this decision was of the nature of a consultation or engagement. And my understanding that the decision is taken 
and the three-month period is not really to decide whether or not that decision is overturned, but rather to assist customers and staff to deal with the consequences of closure, to allow an opportunity for customers of the bank to make other arrangements and to assist them there and end. And I want in particular to state, and I think Mr Henry alluded to this, uh, I think it was Mr Henry in his speech about the, the period of consultation. Now, I think it's absolutely essential that every customer of, of the Royal Bank of Scotland and any other bank that indulges in it takes decisions to close branches, and of course others do as well. The RBS are not alone. That it is, as Mr Finlay rightly said, that the customers' interests must be placed at the heart of this, and there is a time period that's required. I want to know from the Royal Bank of Scotland whether they are sure that all of their customers can make those arrangements within three months. I also would like to know, and Mr Henry raised this as a suggestion, and I'm going to pursue this with the Royal Bank as a result uh, of his suggestion, that in particular opportunities are given to explore the possibility of local credit unions being used as an alternative. And I chair a credit union working group. And I think credit unions need more help from the bank, the British Bank Association and the government in order to be able to continue to expand their operations throughout the country. They are doing so already. Not all do so, but many are effectively operating as banks, but they can't get access to a sort code. So they can't offer proper banking facilities. That's a kind of hidden and detailed point, which uh, I think is one that it, it is important and is directly relevant to this debate. Because if the customers wish to make alternative arrangements, then it should not just be with the Royal Bank, but with others. So I will most certainly pursue that with the Royal Bank. Now, I wanted to, to I think most of the members recognise that, that action needs to be taken in order to deal with the financial damage which the banks sustained as a result of some uh, monumental failures of decisions in, re in relation to investments about which we all know and about which none of us can do anything whatsoever. They have to deal with the consequences with that. And I think all members have recognised that uh, that does mean that difficult decisions have to be taken. Um, but I think it's also correct to point out, and Mr Finlay did state, that of course it is the uh, customers' interests that are paramount, that increasingly customers are using other facilities, mobile apps, the, bank have, the Royal Bank have informed me that more than 2.1 million customers use the RBS mobile app per week, with more than 50% of customers actively using mobile phone and online banking. But this is interesting that they expect that 4 million customers will be using that by the end of 2014. In other words, this is a rapidly changing scenario. The uptake of online mobile facilities is massively increasing and at the same time, the use of traditional bank branches is massively reducing. This is the reality, presiding officer, and I think most, if not all, members recognise that this means that as customer practice changes, so inevitably difficult decisions will have to be made. With regard to the three particular branches, uh, I understand that the decline in transactions since 2011 have been 16, 22 and 25 per cent, respectively, at Armadale, Fault House and Hart Hill. One point was made that I'm going to pursue with the Royal Bank of Scotland, I think it was Mr Finlay that raised it, uh, suggesting that the percentage reduction in footfall uh, was somewhat less than in other branches which hadn't suffered closure. I will specifically write to the Royal Bank after this debate to get an answer to Mr Finlay on that point. I think points made by members in this chamber of that nature deserve to be answered by the Royal Bank. I'm not here as a critic or defender of the Royal Bank, but I am here to answer questions and to ensure that this Parliament and elected representatives get responses. I'm happy to give way to Mr Pentland if I have time. Pentland. Thank you, Minister. Would the Minister agree with me and Mr Henry that if the asset uh, is being considered uh, for the community, that he would insist the Royal Bank uh, takes on board the public priority as opposed to that of the private uh, priority? Well, I, I certainly I, I strongly have the view that the, the Royal Bank must consider the interests of their customers, the community and their staff in all of these matters, and we take that very seriously. So I, I think that, that uh, the, the, the point is, is well made. Um, I would also like to say, and not shirk this point with regard to bankers' bonuses, that I think in Scotland and the UK, this is one of the topics which most irks the public. It's existed for several years now, 
And I do not think the public feel there has been a satisfactory response. Quite what that response is, of course, is a legitimate matter of debate. But my personal view is that as long as it remains apparently unresolved, then the rehabilitation of the reputation of banks uh, will be a difficult task. In conclusion, Presiding Officer, the Scottish Government engaged with the Royal Bank of Scotland. We've met Mr Swinney, First Minister, myself, um, the Deputy First Minister and other colleagues obviously engage in all sorts of matters with the Royal Bank. We have raised the issue of branch closures with them at these meetings uh, over the piece. We welcome the alternative investment in mobile van branches. We welcome some of the alternatives that the banks are coming, the Royal Bank is coming up with. We welcome the increased use of post offices as an alternative uh, location. Uh, we are pleased that the, the bank is engaging in consultation. I will raise points as I have undertaken to members following this debate on specific matters as to how these are raised. Uh, uh, but, uh, presiding officer, I'm, I, I, w I am determined to continue to engage closely with all the main banks in Scotland as they seek to implement fundamental change to seek to restore customer trust and confidence. Many thanks. <clears throat> I now suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2.30.